I was born for 57 years ago in the southwest of France, uh, not, uh, not far from the, Sp the, border, the Spanish border, <coughs> in a little town which is called Dax. Uh, but I was only born there, and then I moved uh, to, to Paris, to Paris area, and that's where I grew up uh, as a child, and I, I went to school there, uh, and to university. Uh, before I moved to south of France, to Montpellier, which is on the Mediterranean coast, where I started to work as a journalist, as I, I was then uh, 21 years old. When I was 16 years old, I wanted to be a pilot, pilot on, on, uh, on, uh, in the military. And then I, I, I met a guy who was a military pilot and he, he, in a way in a, he, he told me what would my career look like and until the pension. And for me it was, I don't want to know everything until the end of my life. So I wanted, I wanted adventure, I wanted uh, new, new things, I wanted uh, uncertainty and, and so on. So, at that, at that time, I already had, had uh, journalism in mind, so I chose journalism. Uh, I was uh, uh, yeah, 17, uh, 17 years old when I decided to be a journalist, and I wanted to travel a lot, to go to unsecure areas. I was, uh, I, at that time, I had in mind to, to go to Lebanon. Lebanon, it was civil war at that time, and uh, in the French media, we spoke, uh, it was a many, many reports about the civil war in Lebanon. So for me, it was kind of, I was very much embedded in that. In that. And for me as a uh, wannabe journalist, it was, Lebanon was my, my dream. It can be, it, I mean, strange, it's so strange, but it, it was a, so I started, uh, I went to the university uh, three years and then I, I was, I, was not, I, I did not have any patience to wait higher degrees, so I wanted to be a journalist now. So at 21, I uh, started in the local newspaper in South of France, but as soon as I, as, as soon as, uh, I got some my first paid holidays, I went to Lebanon during the war. Uh, it was, and for me, it was a kind of obvious, obvious choice to get there. Uh, I mean, if I've been... Uh, 20 years older, I should have go to, to Vietnam, I guess. It was a kind of initiation travel as a young journalist for me. Uh, because uh, the reason why I wanted to be such kind of journalist was I, uh, my father has been a soldier during the Algerian civil war, and, and he, he never spoke about his war, but I was very curious. So he had many books about the war. So I was, I keep reading all the books in his library uh, and, and uh, discovering the stories of these men, soldiers, who were, who had a certain idea on honor, on camaraderie and, and that kind of solidarity. And I was quite in, impacted by that kind of stories. And, but I was also, it was also obvious at this man has, it was very difficult for them to tell their own stories. So for me, I was thinking that I would like to tell the stories they were not able to tell themselves. So it was kind of the start of this, you know, reflection about why I want to be a journalist. But I started at 21, I knew nothing about journalism. Um, I got uh, education at the university in, in economy which was not preparing my, me to, to, to journalism. Uh, so I just uh, starting from the street, from scratch, you know. I, had, I was lucky to have some uh, chief editor who had, uh, was kind enough to, to learn me. Don't try like this, it's, you cannot blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, it took time. I was very young, obviously. Uh, but it has been a process. Uh, it has been a long process because I've not gone through the famous uh, journalist uh, high schools uh, in France. Uh, but I, I learned my, 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 my work from scratch and, and uh, I think it's, uh, 
it, it, it has learned me to, to, to listen to people, which is, of course, basic uh, knowledge to have uh, to, to, in order to, to do the job. So I like to listen to people. Um, so I, I've been uh, working as a journalist uh, locally in Montpellier, south of France, for eight or nine years. But uh, also starting to work for the national television as a regional correspondent, working for a national daily newspaper as a regional correspondent. So it started, you know, step by step to, to reach, I started to reach the moon. <laughs> I stopped uh, being a correspondent for Le Monde short after my first travel to, to Karachi. Uh, I went to Karachi first time in 2016 and I stopped. There is no, no connection with that, but, but uh, uh, I stopped being a full-time correspondent for Le Monde at that time. I was covering then the Baltic and Nordic and Baltic countries. Because at that time I was already a, a writer uh, and and uh, and and uh, I did not have time to do everything, write write books, making research for the books, uh, and uh, traveling for articles for the Monde and for other. It was too too much. So I had to make a choice. It took two years for me to make that choice to stop with the Monde as a correspondent and to do something else. So but I still I'm still working from time to time with Le Monde. When, when they need me. Uh, for example, now, with the war in Ukraine, uh, I've been working again as, as, a, as a journalist, covering uh, what is happening in the neighboring countries, in the, in the Baltic states, for example. I've been quite many times. I will go after Pakistan. I will get back there again for, for the month. So, but it's uh, only a, a little part of my working time now, which is dedicated, dedicated to, the, to, 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 to journalism, to, 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 to the moment. I wrote, I wrote my, my first book, uh, it was a non-fiction. Uh, I started to write it in the uh, mid-90s. It was a story about a survivor from the Gulag who <coughs> was living in Estonia. And he has been lying about almost everything in his life in order to, to save his life. Uh, and I, I made three years of investigation in different countries about him. And uh, I sent the, the manuscript to 10 different publishing houses, and I got 10 no. <laughs> so I was a little bit <laughs> Uh, angry, uh, so it took some years for me to to get back to the manuscript and rewrite it completely, and and uh, send it again to a few uh, publishers and get it published. Uh, 2006, so it, it took many, quite many years, but it was for the best because I think the the first manuscript, the first draft, was not good. I mean, it was probably some reason. For why they, they said no in the first, first time. Uh, yes, so that's it. And, and uh, 2006, and then my first, uh, I wrote as another non-fiction about the North Sea divers, people working for the oil and gas industry in the North Sea, Norwegian people for the most, uh, English and, and so on. It was dramatic stories, it was a non-fiction. I made a documentary, TV documentary of it also. And my first novel, it came uh, for exactly 10 years ago, uh, 2012, <coughs> and uh, it was a novel, a mystery, a crime novel, about um, rain the police, which is something very special, very exotic, I would say, uh, even, even for Nordic people. I mean, most of the people living in Stockholm, you know, where they don't know about the rain the police, and it's, it was a way for me to following some inspectors from this uh, reindeer police, which are in, Lap in Lapland, is the northern part of Scandinavia. Uh, they are dealing with uh, reindeers, every kind of conflicts uh, connected to, to, to reindeer herding. Uh, and it was a way for me to tell about the Sami people. Sami people, which is a, 
Aboriginal, Aboriginal uh, people in Northern Europe, uh, the only Aboriginal people in Europe, actually, uh, suffering of a lot of discrimination. Uh, and, f and to my, I mean, I was very, very surprised when I moved to Sweden <coughs> and when I started to read about them and to read about uh, about, and to, to travel to Lapland, that uh, people in Stockholm were absolutely, absolutely not interested in, the, in this uh, Sami people. And the fact that Nordic people are so, you know, the hand of the herbs, they are champion of in, uh, human rights all over the world, but they are not interested in, the, or in their own minority suffering of discrimination. And I could, I could not understand that. So, I mean, I, I did reportage uh, stories for my newspapers, and then I discovered this reindeer police and uh, thought that it was a, the best way, best way to, to go in into this story with a different angle. It was, and then at the time, it, I mean, I, I followed this, uh, some of this uh, reindeer police for months, actually, because I did also a TV documentary about them. So. First, I wanted to, to write uh, non-fiction about that, but in a way, you know, it became a crime novel. Don't ask me why and how, but the fact is it became a crime novel because I had a lot of stories. I, I had followed this uh, police, uh, reindeer police for months, so I had a lot of stuff. Uh, and I wanted really to write about these topics. So it became a crime novel which to my big surprise, uh, went very well in France and has been since then published in 20, 20 languages. Um, right now, yes. Uh, I don't know how it will be with the next book because that's, that's how it is when you are a writer. You never know. You never know. So, But uh, the next book, if it doesn't sell, then it's back to back to, you know, back to me. And, and I mean, for me, it's, I, I, I can live with that because I've, I've been living with that. I've been living that way since I started as a journalist. I've been a freelance journalist for almost all my life. Uh, I've been a journalist for 35 years. Uh, I've been a staff writer in a, in a newspaper only during two years at the beginning of my career. I was in the army for one year. Okay, but since then I've been a freelance. So, I mean, so as a freelance, you get paid only if you write an article. If you don't write an article, you don't get paid. That's so simple. I mean, I, I guess it's the same situation for many people in Pakistan. Uh, so for me, it's my way of living. It's not easy, uh, but I mean, I guess uh, living that way in, in uh, it's, it's, uh, I like to walk, so I'm a huge walking capacity. Um, so I've always I've been lucky enough to, to, to be able to make a living all the time, by, only by writing. If I, if I listen to the, to the French ambassador in Sweden who gave me this medaille, um, According to his talk, it, I mean his statement, it was because I, it's because of my books, and because my books have reached an audience abroad, so uh, giving uh, giving uh, uh, also an, an impact to the French language abroad. I mean to the to a French writer abroad, which is part of it, I think. Uh, also because I've been as. Uh, as he said, uh, also because of my work as a journalist, uh, the way I've been reporting about different issues, and I mean, even it's not natural for journalists to get medals, but I, I'm I, it's sure that I got the medals as a writer, not as a journalist. Journalists don't like medals in principle, you know. But uh, as a writer, yes, I guess. I mean, it's a way to. I've been invited to. I mean. I was invited to Karachi uh, Literature, Literature Festival in 2016, so it's a way, of course, to bring the French culture abroad, and that's why, I guess, partly I got this down.
It's, it's, uh, I have a book with, uh, with, uh, is set in Karachi in, uh, in current time. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing this, the last observations here, the last rewriting also uh, here, uh, trying also to produce some uh, podcast uh, in accordance to, to this book. Uh, so I'm trying to record songs from Karachi in order to, to, yeah, to, to produce a podcast, uh, hopefully. I'm not, I've never done that before, so it's quite stimulating. And I also, the third thing, I'm, I'm uh, doing research for another mystery, uh, historical mystery, um, which uh, will be set in the uh, 17th century, partly in this area. So Karachi was not existing at that time, but it was Tata, which is uh, much of interest for me. Tata, I was there already for six years ago. Uh, so I, I, for example, I met Dr. Lashari, which is a archaeologist and huge expert uh, on uh, Matli and Tata and, and on the graveyards and so it, uh, huge interest. So part of this story will be uh, as a main character is a French guy, but traveling from Europe to South Africa, which was the start of colonization at that time by the Dutch, and in this area where you had Portuguese and Dutch and, and so on. So. so he will arrive to Tata, and so I'm doing still doing research about that. It's a start on something, yeah, we know, I'm st because I have, I'm, I have, I think I'm, I'm walking with, just talking about books, novels, I'm working with uh, s five or six different novels. Uh, so the one about uh, Tata, for example, not only Tata, but this one is one of them. I have uh, another story, crime novel in Lapland. Uh, I have another crime story maybe in, uh, in China, another in Israel. Uh, so I'm, and I've been working with all these different uh, books, projects, uh, simultaneously. So, um, it's, and it's also working with graphic novels and with uh, TV series, and uh, still working as a journalist from time to time, maybe non, some non-fiction books, so yeah, many different projects. Oh, not so many actually. When I, I, I know people who have been to so many countries, but for me it has been mainly Europe, uh, many Europe, and yeah, I'm in Pakistan two times. I've been to, to Brazil. I've been to <coughs> Mauritania. Uh, I've been to, to Tunisia, to Lebanon, as I said, to Jordan. To I mean some countries, but not so not so many. Actually. Kyrgyzstan, I mean, but. Uh, Absolutely, I'm still teaching, and for me it's very important because uh, I think it's, if I have learned something in my career, um, I think it's important to, you know, to to, to move it to the next generation. I, I and I, I'm so tired often to learn, to hear people saying, "Oh, there is nothing to expect from journalism." To young journalists, they are not they are not working anymore. They are not educated. You know? And I, I totally disagree with that. So, and, and when I, that's something I've learned from teaching journalism. When I meet this young journalist, I'm, 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 I'm teaching, they, they, they have the fire, you know. They want to do a very good job. I can, you can, I mean, when you are an experienced journalist, you can feel it. And for me, it's so giving, you know, to meet this young journalist. So that's why I want to continue teaching. Yeah? Yeah, the, the few, the few who know about Pakistan, because I think, uh, and it's it will it will be part of, of my next book actually uh, about this uh, this gap uh, between uh, the the way the people look at Pakistan or at many foreign countries actually without outside Europe. Uh, I mean, I think for most of the people. Uh, for most of the people in in uh, in, 
in France, I guess. I mean, I'm living in Sweden. Uh, they, they see Pakistan, which is uh, like as, as a country, which is terrifying. I mean, the, for, for them, it's, it's impossible to understand that country. It's too much, too much of too many things. Uh, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the media have often a tendency to, to give a wrong picture because it's... Uh, uh, so they will only... They will only read or, or, or watch TV on, of, about Pakistan when there is some thing about blasphemy. And, they were, and so they think that every people in Pakistan is, is completely, you know, uh, uh, obsessed with that, uh, which is not the case, obviously, not according to my opinion, to my, 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 my stay in Pakistan, at least. Uh, they, for them, it's Pakistan is a, is a country of, of uh, violence, of, uh, because of so many terror blast, bomb blast and so on, killings. And, and of course, often they, when they read about Pakistan, it's about such things, you know. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's not, obviously it's not a country where they want to go. Uh, I met many people who are ready to go to India, to the neighboring countries, which, I mean, has a lot of problems too, obviously, but they have a kind of opinion about Pakistan. Uh, because of the, of the many things they read about Balochistan, about uh, the, the army, about about uh, killings, about all these things, they, they feel insecure. I mean, they, so it's I guess there is, there is a lot of things to do about to, to try to better the picture of Pakistan. I don't know, yeah, hopefully, but I mean, it's not that kind of book for that purpose. Oh, my wife is a journalist and uh, she's working on the Swedish radio and uh, <coughs> working with uh, climate issues. Uh, and uh, my children, there are both of the, uh, the two, two um, oldest ones are working in Stockholm and the, the youngest one is studying in London. Mm -hmm.